Hello, does everyone hear me? Yes. yes. All right. Just right off the bat, um, this is a show and it's being, uh, it's being streamed live and it will be recorded so it can go on YouTube. If you call in, that gives us the right to use your likeness and with that, and you can't get pissed at us. Um, so do not DMCA us because that will be a failed effort and you can just cry in your room. How's that? Awesome. Uh, all right, without further ado, since since this week's topic will be the subjugation of women in religion, uh, let's have the woman speak on it first and just give her opinion on it. So, Ryu, you have the floor. Uh, okay, wow. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't really prepared for it, but uh, basically, it, uh, religion treats women like objects mostly, at least in Judaism, which I'm familiar with. A woman is uh, something like, uh, you know, women and children, the same. It's like livestock, you can sell it, it's an asset. Yeah. It's not really a person. And um, that's mostly why I, I'm not interested in it. Because, <laughs> uh, well, sucks. All right, atheist coffee. I don't know. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> that's that's okay. Atheist coffee. What's your what's your contention on it? Well, if you look at the history of religion, look at the origin of religion. Um, it's usually, except for some new cults, um, new reimaginings, say Mormonism, um, they have it, their roots in a very patriarchal society, um, Bronze Age religion. They look to, uh, I mean, where women were traded as property. Look at the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. It was about men. Men led, men bought and sold women. Um, and you see the vestiges of that today where um, there's a, you can't have women priests in the Catholic Church or women preachers in a lot of pro Protestantism. I can speak mostly only from a Christian perspective. And, uh, yeah, uh, religion um, is oppressive to women and because it has its roots in um, our ancient patriarchy. And what do you think, Strauss? Uh I agree with what Atheist Coffee and... Um, you can uh, call me whatever you want. Ashley, I don't know. We're fine. Everyone's, everyone's just here agreeing. Anybody, anybody want to comment on how we think it came about? That's a good question. I think uh, mostly it's probably because it was a patriarchal uh, society where it developed. So men were in control. Women were something, you know, they, uh, they were very fearful that their children were not their own. So they, have, uh, they had to uh, put a lot of uh, emphasis on their virginity for that reason. It goes on for the Yeah, it's it's interesting. Um, I think I think the yeah. sexual role uh, or or the roles that sex plays in in uh, in religion or like in just the general worldview and like we saw with women's rights in the United States. Uh, happening at, at such a late point in time, I think it just had to do with the work that men were expected to do as opposed to the work that women were ex expected to do, and there were gender roles for a long time, and I think that just kind of got intertwined with religion, but, but the thing about religion is you, you have these tenets that you can't let go, um, and when you do let go of them, there becomes a huge faction, and there, there are large factions of uh, religion, and I think it's just because, like you were talking about veg vestiges. Well, I mean, they they have to be left over uh, because because of the fact that it, it was so dogmatically held on to. Because if you are allowing a woman to do all these things, then that's con that's contradictory to what uh, you say you believe. And if that you know, if you can contradict that, just fine. What stops it the rest from being contradicted? Could be could be possible. Um Possibly alpha male, you know, possibly um, even older than even human civilization, possibly that male societies are caused by that because, you know, alpha males and even um, primates, you know, it's the alpha males. It's a patriarchal society. It's not a mar mar um, matriarch society. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah. 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 You know, what's interesting is I don't think any of it was intentional. I think it's just a... Um, I think it was just a way to, like, I think it was just a social expression, but once we reached the industrial era, there was no reason for women not to be able to have their own uh, liberties, you know? So, yeah, yeah I, I agree. It's just part I of the agree. social structure. And, and it got incorporated in Can't Let It Go. Like, the fact that women uh, are not allowed to you know, speak in religion, it's interesting watching uh, female apologists because, you know, I mean, they, they are allowed to speak on YouTube, I suppose, but according to their religion, they can't speak in church, you know, they're not really allowed to preach, and interesting Bible verse, I forgot where it's at, but it says that, you know, women have to keep silent, um, and if, if she has something to question, it, then she better ask the man when she's at home. So, yeah, yeah it, it, it has those uh, oppressive roots. It's, um, in fact, I think I find it's also in, yeah, that, yeah, it's in the first Timothy, which I think, I don't know, does anybody know whether that's in the New Testament or not? Timothy is sounds in like a New Testament. In the New Testament. What specifically yeah. are you looking for? Uh, the first Timothy two eleven through fourteen it says, "Let the woman learn in silence with all sub, uh, subjection." Subjection. Yeah, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. I love that verse. Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived. But when the woman came to Adam and told him. Here, eat this apple, it's really yeah. good. He wasn't deceived then? That No, he wasn't deceived. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Well, yeah. it's, interesting. it's interesting why it didn't happen, why Eve didn't fall by herself the instant she ate the apple. Why did she have to give Adam the apple first? I heard um, it explained that um, Eve was deceived, and then when Adam saw that, that she had ate, eaten the fruit, um, he decided willingly to go along with it so he could be with her or something like that. That's the apologist's answer. I guess of that's course. supposed to make Adam look big. Oh, yeah. Big man. Oh, he's so generous and self-sacrificing. Oh, yes. <laughs> he, he, he did it because he had woman. no woman to... He was, she, she did it because there was no other woman around. So, I mean, if he had just left her, you know... <laughs> what, what would he have sex with? A rock? I mean, an animal? It doesn't really work, does it? Well, I, it does say that you know, God gave him dominion over all the other animals, I guess. That's true. He brought all, hey, the, uh, hey, uh, all the animals before him to see if he could find a, a companion. Yeah, I bet, yeah his, uh, I, bet put, I bet he put his dong in every single thing and it didn't work. So he's like, God, can you make me one? The dog. <laughs> and then he said, oh, shit. <laughs> all right, um, do you guys want to bring on the first guest now, then? Mm-hmm. Sure. Oh. How's this going, Redline? Is he available? Yeah, where, where's he been? He's been on all this, all, like, past weeks and stuff. At, oh, now he's... Hey. Hey. How's it going? Have you, have you been listening in on Vaughn Live? Uh, no, I, uh, I was outside uh, tending to my little dog, Lily. She was digging holes in the front lawn. And, uh, she's been told about that before. Let me put my... Am I on video here? No? Here, I'll let you guys look at my ugly mug. Give you something to giggle about while you look at my face. <laughs> I honestly think you like, You look like... What's his face? Oh, God. Oh, God. I forgot the guy's name. The, the Republican guy who's on radio. Who's crazy. Uh. Oh, um... Limburger, Lumberger. Rush Limbaugh. Yeah, Rush Limbaugh. That's it. Yeah, yeah, I, I was told by a, a couple of teenage girls that I look like Brad Pitt. <laughs> I don't see it. Yeah, I, I definitely see the resemblance. No, from 40 feet away, they said. <laughs> yeah. So, um... What's going on, Redline? You want to come on and uh, do a little one-on-one -on -one with Rand Campbell? After, after the... the
Well, no, not today because how I'm doing it, bro, is I got to uh, I got to schedule you, uh, and I got to set up the lineup, and after that, I have to promote it. Like I want to make sure that it's done correctly. I want to do, you know, two hours with you where we just sit down and talk like men. Uh, you let me know how you got to where you are in life. I let you know where how I got to where I am in life, and hopefully. Uh, you know, we can just be a couple of guys having a cup of coffee together, if if that's all right with you, brother. Coffee over the internet. That yeah, I think it's just a nice format, and I want to kind of do it like a talk show. So if you have a video that you want to promote, uh, we can premiere it on the show, meaning I'll take a clip of it, and we'll do a quick premiere of your video, discuss your video, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, have it like a real talk show where you're kind of a guest and we can kind of promote you in a way that's going to be beneficial to you getting subscribers and being able to um, inform people of the content of your videos rather than have people kind of make up their own minds. Just, I think it's a good format, brother. Um, I'll, I'll definitely. I don't recognize, oh, there's my buddy Sir Strife. You should have, you should have been on last week. We had God on. God, yeah, no, I that. I, I was watching it. What do you uh, think? <laughs> would you say he's? Would you say he's nutter? Um. Yeah, yeah, he got some issues, but he's not. He's not stupid. Um, he got arrested, actually. You're kidding. He threatened. No, no, he got arrested in 2009 States. for making threats. <laughs> threatened the president of the United States, and he's now on F FBI watch. I Wait, I have to ask. Did he threaten him with hell? I have no idea. <laughs> and, and he made, and then he made, com then he made comments to the video saying that, oh well, you don't want, you don't want God to be angry at you and stuff. So I was like, okay. So you're not God. Have you at any point had any of the powers God would have, like been able to know my name? He got my name wrong. Got my location wrong. He wasn't here in a quarter of a second. I mean, if God has the power to create all 13-something billion light years of the universe, he can't zip from Phoenix, Arizona to Florida. Really, now You don't have that power. Whatever. I'm done with him. He's a phony. Yeah, yeah at the very phony. least, turn water into wine. I mean, at the very least. Oh, that would be great. He also, but, no, but the, but the thing is, though, he claims, he claims uh, weird things. Just weird. Yeah, yeah listen to him. He seems he, articulate enough. He believes what he believes. I well, yeah, actually, I think this world it gets crazier and crazier. Go ahead. You're breaking up. Yeah. Oh well. So uh, well, the, the irony in your uh, refutation there, Redline, is the fact that uh, he doesn't believe the universe works the way your example refutes it. So. Uh, I don't. I don't care how he thinks the way the universe works. The yeah. fact is, if he created, he should be able to know that this is what is actually out there. The fact he got that wrong is another nail. But in he the doesn't coffin. claim to be all knowing, though. That's the thing. He doesn't claim to be. All he claims to be God. No, no, but he claims to be like Jesus. He doesn't claim to be like because Jesus didn't know things that God didn't know either. Because because Jesus, he just knew, Jesus knew a, a lot of things. He could predict the futures. Bef before the crow caused three times, you will deny me. You know. Yeah, but he didn't want no one feed so in season. I mean, yeah. I mean, if Jesus can, can predict the future, I think he'd be able to predict what science would tell us now that the universe is the way it is. The way well, he did make a it. prediction. He, he said that the world, that, that ice will fall from the sky and that's the end of the world. So, uh, he yeah. didn't say when, though. Yeah, I think he, he, I think he said. He said. Uh, by, by the way, I will feed you. Uh, I'll feed an entire army with five loaves and two fish. By the way, did you know that in the future there's going to be a thing called the Hubble Space Telescope? It's pretty awesome. <laughs> you know that that that's that's what Jesus could say if he wanted to. I mean, he's Jesus. Except they didn't have that language back then. You know that, right? They could have still said Hubble. Yeah, but they would not know what the fuck Hubble is. <laughs> You do realize Jesus has the ability to explain everything. Well, I don't know. No, he had restraints, though, brother. There were restraints on Christ. Um, yeah, I he mean, took the form of a of a human. He took the he had the same restraints that any human would have. Like he felt pain, he had emotion, <laughs> and stuff like that. Everybody wants to act like because he was God, it wasn't a real sacrifice, and because he was God in human flesh, 
that he could have chose to end it any way he wanted to, but he already committed to exactly what happened. I mean, in the in which it happened. Didn't Jesus know that his father created the universe? Um, I don't know that that he knows it in the way that you want me to answer that. Um, I can't speak for the mind of Christ. Well, out this, did, did he have like some pre pre uh, requisite to say that he created the universe, that he was the creator of all things, makers of the heavens and the earth? He spoke. Yeah, he spoke of that. But if you remember, also when he was on the cross, he asked his he asked God, Father, why have you forsaken? Me? So there was a disconnect of some level, and and you know to to the extent of that disconnect, I don't know, but I know that for him to say, Father, why have you forsaken me, is a huge suggestion that there was a disconnect, kind of like there's a disconnect between us and God. Mm-hmm. Well, the biblical God seems to have had a huge disconnect with scientific reality, like, uh, say, microbes, and germs, or uh, distant starlight and the size of the universe. I mean, these th- very helpful things that could have been suggested to us um, in the text were not. I mean, I think foremost in the list is uh, germs cause disease and not demons and sin. Now, if, if this God actually made it written in a language that nobody knew would come about until like you know now that would be impressive you know like if they if this like you know if there was english letters before english existed and it was not it was not like you know like circum like circumvented you know other places it was just this one text says this in english that was dated to back then and it says this shit now then i'll believe that that's that's i don't think that would be very convincing because it would be fulfilling prophecy. We'll invent English in order to understand what God said. No, 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 no. I'm saying nobody understood it until the me, until English came about, but English already existed somehow. That's what I'm saying. What's your name, dear? I don't know. He's from Israel. Ma- me? Yeah, I'm a Roma. Roma. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Randline was telling me about you. What, you're, you're good looking. What's he talking about? I think you're very good looking. Of course I'm good looking. <laughs> Whoa, 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 Ace. Whoa, Ace. <laughs> Very nice. Down. That was supposed to be a secret. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So so let me ask you a question, dear. Are you a, a Christian? Me, no. Describe your, your belief or your lack of. I believe life is awesome and worth living. And, and, you don't, and, and you don't believe, and you don't believe that that you have a inner being known as a soul, and that no. when the physical body dies, that the energy known as your id, your who you are, carries mm-hmm. on. No, to I don't giant, believe. You know what? I've got another video going here. Um, let me just end all this silliness here, because I've got. Ten windows open. I've got all oh, there. You all I got. You know who I've got? I'm listening to. I was wondering why I was getting a headache. Uh, rational roundtable. Ace, right. what, are, what are your beliefs, Ace? What's that, bro? What are your beliefs? Um, I believe full heartedly that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. Um, I believe that this physical experience. Is is very temporal. Um, I believe that we are all striving desperately to reconnect to that of which created the experience. So, and, you, go ahead. I'm sorry. Would it be fair then to call you something of a pantheist? Uh, it would be fair to call me a Christian uh, because I believe that there are two beliefs in the world. Watch watch the look on the panel's faces if you can. Um, there are only two beliefs in the world. Do you care to hear them? Okay. Yeah. Or do you care to argue that there's more than two beliefs? Oh, I know the two already. Well, uh, I don't you chirp in then, Redline. <laughs> you are. I would you like are two beliefs. I would like to hear what. I would like to hear your synopsis. Well, what 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 do you believe? What do I believe? How many beliefs are there? Well, that's kind of a. It's a silly question. I, because, I think we're talking about oh, what Ace believes, oh, right. not what. All right, just, just, just. Because there is, there is reality. Believe. 
there is reality that can be tested, that can be that can be um, shown yeah. to be real. But... Yes, atheists can't be considered a belief because you refuse to make it absolute. Are, no, are you are you no. arguing beliefs existentially, or are you are? Uh, okay, let are me you... just let me just rephrase it so that because I know in talking to atheists, everything has to be dotted and crossed, designed, drawn out, and be picture perfect. Otherwise, you end up with five thousand questions. Um, okay, so here's, I'll just, in this world, there are many religions. Okay. I'm going to call those religions separate beliefs from one another. I believe that there are, when you, when you boil it up into a pot, it comes out to beliefs. How many beliefs, religions, do you believe there are in the world? And just ballpark it. Like, I don't expect A you to be A million? Down. I don't know, thousands. There is reality, and then there's make-believe. I don't know. <laughs> All right, I believe there are two beliefs. There is the belief that humanity can save itself, that we can stop the wars, we can stop the, 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 the violence, we can stop the anger, we can stop the deceit, we can stop the corruption. I believe that there's that belief, and then there's the belief that we need a savior. So... There is only one other belief that offers us. What thing. about what about the belief that we're going to destroy ourselves and there is no savior? You socialist bastard. Well, I don't even consider that a belief because it's an atheistic viewpoint. Oh come on. Okay. Wait, no, what about so what really, about these people? I'm sorry, what about I'm right. sorry. I'm gonna I'm, let you, all right, I'm gonna let you go, Rhea, and then I wanna get a point in. I wanted to ask, what about bees and the belief that God or something like all-powerful created the world, but now it's not meddling with the world? Uh, uh, God. Uh, uh, a, yeah. hold, on, hold on a sec. Hold on a sec. Uh, Atheist Coffee and, and Sir Strike, we'll get to your points in a minute. I want to hear Ace answer Ryu's question. I didn't even get the full extent of the question. I'm sorry, dear. If you can say it to me again, I'd appreciate it. Sure. I asked what about this and the belief that God or some higher being created the world, but then stopped meddling with it. Um, I believe that when God gave us free will, um, it's not necessarily that he stopped meddling, but there are laws in place that disallow him to step in at certain points. Well, she's um, saying this is a separate belief from that just, belief. This well, is well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm just okay, explaining. I believe, I did, okay, if that belief that you're talking about does not have Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior, then it goes with the belief of we can fix ourselves. I don't get what we have to save ourselves from. Well, I don't see anything. And that's exactly why Christ came for that. Well, exact saves thing. ourselves from what though? What? What did well, Christ save us? From? Well, okay, and I'm just going to sum it up in a way that hopefully. It, it, okay. it, it, uh, let's, just, let's just take what he says at face value. Let's not go on to ontology. Okay, okay. by, the, by the way, Sir Stripe, I'm not a debater. I'm a believer. And I found out that the reprobate mind is the mind of the atheist, which was put upon him by God in order to desire debate. I, I don't debate things I believe in. You couldn't tell me that my wife's cheating on me and then have me defend it for an hour. I right. know she isn't, so there's Please. no debate. But let me just answer um, that question for you. Um, I believe there's only two beliefs, and the fact that you say, what do we need saving from, is the exact reason why Christ came. Because humanity doesn't even know that God cannot be before sin. He cannot have sin in his presence. So you are not going through the gates with sin. I'll just give you a quick diagram of what I know to be true. Let's say hypothetically, and, and don't just pretend you believe in sin. Pretend that you believe cheating on your wife is a sin. Not a crime, not a crime, but a sin. Something that would, would be considered very bad to God. So let's say hypothetically that's the only amount of sin that you're trying to get through the gates of heaven. If God cannot be in the presence of sin, ever, 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 not, not any sin, and all sins are equal, meaning 
that he is no respecter of sin. He doesn't give one sin more sin than the other. He doesn't give one sin less sin than the other. They're all sin. So hypothetically, this is all you've got. Are you getting that through the proverbial, the hypothetical gates of heaven? Based on the fact that God cannot be in front of sin. Well, no, I know you're going to ask me a thousand questions, but just on what I said, if God cannot be in the presence of sin, hypothetically, let's, let's pretend we're playing a video game. Can you get this through the gates and put it before God? No, but can I ask a question? Okay, no, no, you can't. Okay. No, okay. no, no, you can't. Watch. So if you can't get that through, how is humanity getting this through? The only way you're getting this through is if, in a spiritual understanding, you're able to, before you die of the physical and go into the spiritual, you're able to hand this off to, to, a, to, a, to a stronger being so that when you go to the gates, you have been cleansed of all sin. Okay. That's the only way you're getting through. Okay. That is what you're talking about, about a savior. All right, we understand. All right, we understand uh, your premise. I think I think all of us, um, all of us sitting here, have a lot of holes in it. But let if we can go back to what you were talking about beliefs, and and you believe that there are two things, which is um, you believe that there there is a dichotomy in which a person believes that humanity can perpetuate its own existence, or the other belief is that humanity needs to be saved, right? Spiritually, yes. That, those are your essential beliefs. So you're not talking about you're not talking about smaller beliefs, like because because when you ask me how many beliefs there are, you're, you're you're lending way to a very arbitrary question that depends on what you're talking about. I mean, do I believe that you know I'm sitting here talking to a computer right now? That's a belief, is it not? Um, well, of course it's a belief, but, but the atheist belief is that you'll never give it a hundred percent guarantee. Um, and, and that's the whole pre-sup argument is that you're not going, if I said to you, is there a God? You can't say no. You can say, according to the evidence, I've been led to believe that there's a very good chance that there isn't a God, but the atheist, the atheist cannot say absolutely. And the same goes for, are you talking to me through a computer? You would have to say, well, according to the evidence that's present, presented before me, I would have to say that in according to my mind and the reality that I know to be true, chances are it's a very good uh, a possibility that I'm talking to you through a computer. Well, what you're doing right now, what you're doing right now is you're straw manning me. And you don't necessarily understand my position. I'm, I'm, I am an atheist, and I don't have to, I don't have to subject myself to what you say an atheist believes. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of the atheist that I've spoken to, and I've spoken to many, 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 many. Okay, uh, atheist coffee. Do you want to address something? Well, um, I am speaking through a computer, and you know that for sure. Yes. No. You no. We're one hundred percent true. We yes, don't right here. know That's that it. to be 100% true. Ace, Ace, Ace yeah. if you're going to go on this presuppositional shit. Oh, um, it's okay. I can deal with that. No, no, Seriously. but, I but can, he has to argue that. I, and I don't have to argue anything. Let, 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 let me try some, some from here. Okay, yes, I'm speaking into a microphone right now. And yes, I do know that for a fact. Where do we go from here, Ace? Well, how do you know that to be true? Because it's right in front of me. It's right here. You can point How do you know it. that to you be see, true? This is the thing here. See, hang on, you, hang on, hang on, hang on, atheist coffee. Hang on. I, I let, let me answer this first. Uh, how do I know this to be true? Because I know one thing is a self-attesting truth. I, as a thinking entity, exist, and if I exist, then the things that interact with this thinking entity obviously exist as well. So if I can touch it, feel it, hear it, then that means that it is right in front of me. So you know that to be true. Yes, because it is a self-attesting truth. And how do you know that? Because you see, again, the point it, that I'm trying well, to make is, I'll tell you the point I'm trying to make. The, see, well, in this you're watch, trying to make a, a, a silly argument. You're trying to create distinctions. Oh, actually, I started the conference. See, I got I got pulled into this. With, I thought I was just coming to, to set up a, an appointment with Redline to do my talk show. I didn't realize I was going to be pulled into a room with five atheists. But that's fine. I, I like being tricked once in a while. It keeps the heart going. 
I told you uh, it was going to be a show. I ha- I can I can send you the the list again if you want. Like all I saw is I'm calling you in 15 minutes. Then I went out to my dog and then and then Do I seen you. Do you want to be on the show? Redline VA posted at 6:59. I'll post that. All I saw. It doesn't matter. I'm not complaining, brother. Uh, what I'm saying to you is that what I'm showing you is that this whole atheist and you guys are smart enough. You guys aren't new to the planet. You've been here long enough. This argument between atheists and and Christians has been going on forever. And uh, I don't think you can make that argument even. All right. Well, while I, it's been going on because Christianity has not been around that long, and atheists have been around longer than Christianity. We know that. But it was atheism, like you know, Greeks. The Greeks. There was atheism. I, I, I mean, there's there, there's a point with the pre with the presuppositional arguments that you know, presupposing that my floor is wet when in all actuality it's dry doesn't make it wet. Oh wait, and we lost Ace anyway. So, but yeah, the the point I wanted to to make though, going back to your pre presuppositional argument, is is that it. What I was saying is that it was a self attesting truth. You know, to argue against it is to presuppose it. So you would only be confirming what I just said. So the, make this coffee make a statement. Yeah. Right what uh, what these presuppositionalists are trying to do is um, undercut the um, the observational basis of reality. I mean, you we're sitting here, we're looking at our computers. And they want to make this some kind of existential, you can't say that for sure. And then they want to go ahead, and they want to take this idea, this idea of God, this idea of spirituality, this very nebulous thing you can't point to, and talk about that as if it's real, as if that's what's real, as if what we see all around us right here isn't real, and what they imagine in their heads is. I mean, it's, it's an absolutely ridiculous um, argument. Well, they, they, they want to say, you can tell what, uh, what is true or not, but I can. If I can tell what is true or not, neither can you. You may not exist even. You might exist only in my mind. So what? Well, Let's the problem, talk about real stuff. The problem, the problem with presuppositionalism, and it seems like we always come back to this, and, and it can never be addressed, is that, is that um, they, they, are, they do have special pleading, um, for their side, but when you start when you start posing um, when you start posing answers to their questions, they just continue down this epistemological line, and it never ends for them. To them, they they've reached an arbitrary endpoint that is, it ends with God, whereas everyone else is saying, "Well, how do you know it's God?" And then they say, "Because God," and then you say, "How do you know?" Because God, and and what Redline was talking about with self-attesting truths is the fact that um, that. E- e- even if God is your self-attesting truth, you can always ask more questions. It doesn't matter be- whether or not you give an answer. It, the answer has to appear to be relevant in the person's mind. They, they have to they have to entertain the answer. So the reason he wasn't talking to you, Redline, or the reason you know he kept asking you questions is because self-attesting truth doesn't mean anything to him. It has to it has to be significant. If you said uh, God revealed it to me, that would be the significance to him. Yeah, See, it's I, I can. Because you can go down this epistemological rabbit hole forever. I mean, it it that's yeah. Why, that's what makes the argument childish. Um, do you want to bring Alex on right now? Yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and bring bring Alex on. And yeah, I to- I totally agree. I, I guess the uh, the thing that would eventually lead to, and I guess it kind of won until his internet connection cut out or he ended the call or whatever happened, uh, was that. It's, it's, it's not meant to go anywhere. When you answer their questions, they can't go any further. And when they try to go further, you stop them in their tracks right there. If they can never get to their conclusion, then they haven't, haven't proved anything. So let me just try to add Alex. One second. Come on, add to group call, Skype. And that doesn't seem to be working. Uh... Hang on one second. Yep, it's just it's just showing up busy. It's not allowing me to actually call him. Yeah, he said he might actually. He said he might have to be gone. Um, All right, then then I'll remove him from the list. Then. Well, that's a shame. I wanted to hear what he had to say. 
Well, I can I can see I can see if uh you know if we're if we're gonna go on this uh, presuppositional you know crap, you know I can see if Bible thumping Wayne would like to come on. Of course, it's gonna ring for thirty seconds and he's not gonna answer. But I might just eat my words tonight. Let's just see what happens. But pipe smoking skeptics on. Pipe well, smoking. you know, you know well, P -S -P -S -S. You know what I wanted to do. Um, is I, I never I never intended like it was interesting that we had a theist on because I wanted to get a theist perspective on that and it all just ended up going into that because whenever they they encounter someone with different beliefs they can't uh, they can't hone in on, on a specific topic they just want to get the person to change their beliefs they can't like you can't discuss some other type of philosophy with a religious person because all they try all they'll try to do is change your mind. Yeah. Why don't we get Why don't we get Ace back in and we'll ask him what he thinks about women and religion? Let's see if 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 I can even get get him back on. Yeah, what is going to say? Praise to God, all of his life, think he could grant him with with better fucking internet. <laughs> nope. I like I like that God can't. He's all powerful, but he can't be around seen at all. Yeah, he's uh, yeah. Apparently, God is under house arrest underneath the U.S. government. So, so that's that's another yay moment. Let me see what we can find. Yep, other than that, there is a uh, one one other person that I can bring bring in to talk about it, but uh, he's an atheist. So I don't know if you want to do that or whatnot. Um, he's a he he's a uh, he's a moderator of the atheist hub. Sure. Who is he? Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, his name is uh, Michael Phelps. Yeah, I'm sure he is. Wait, I never heard of him. I know of Essence of Thought, but I never heard of him. Yeah, he 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 works with Essence of Thought on the on the Atheist Hub. He's on right now. Well, I yeah, he's uh he's online. I I didn't ask him, but if you would like him on, I can ask him real quick. Yeah, go ahead, bring him on. All right, continue the conversation. I'll be right back. <laughs> I wanted to see if we can get this educated gadfly in because I think he actually subscribed to me and I think he made a few comments on my videos. Um, I would like to bring him on if, if he's listening to this and if he can uh, see that we would like to bring you on. I think you're a theist, but I'm not sure he was. It's the most fun when we can get theists on and have some good debate. Well, yeah, well, you want to, you know, you want to actually talk to people. You don't want to just agree all the time with everybody. Educated yeah. Catfly, you are not a theist. Uh, I can understand why it's, it might be threatening being a one theist to <laughs> facing five uh, atheists. Well, the, I mean, really, the the only like the point is you want you want to have a you want to have a dissenting opinion. You want to be able to actually converse about things instead of just being like, oh yeah, I agree, I agree. Yeah, That's... sure, I, I I agree with you actually. <laughs> I just say I, I can understand that's why the problem. it's threatening for them. Michael. That's the problem, is agreeing. How dare you agree with them? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. I know Hi, your guys. cohort. I know your core. Oh, frick. Co I can't friggin' speak today. Cohort. Cohort? Yeah. Essence? Yes. Yeah. Love, um, lovely Jank. Lovely Jank. If I'm even speaking his tongue. <laughs> so it sounded like a little British accent in there, but it sounded like you were butchering it somewhat. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was trying. Uh, just, just a bit, bit of ba background. Uh, Michael is uh, one of the uh, moderators on the uh, Atheist Hub, the channel that promotes smaller, you know, atheist-based channels, and he does a pretty, pretty good, good damn job. So, congratulations, man. He's, he's also the guy that knows about the, uh, the. God that's under house arrest by the U.S. government, and uh, the topic oh, today. About Steve? Yeah, he, uh, me, 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 and him had a uh, one hell of an encounter with him. Yeah, we actually went over uh, last night. We had about an hour on my uh, podcast, uh, an Age of Reason. Um, we basically just went into an hour of digging into the guy and basically just breaking down who the hell he is. Yeah, I actually found out about this thing from Diane. How did I know? But yeah, the whole, the whole thing. But um, what would you say um? What would you say about people getting your last name as Phelps, we th that they think you're from the Phelps family? Uh, don't even get me started. I, one of the reasons I started using the name the Neo-Atheist was basically just to... Redline, basically just pretty much the same thing I did for my first uh, year on YouTube.
basically just hiding my full name because of my last name. What are you scared of, you ugly? <laughs> I am a hideous son of a bitch, you know that. You're uglier than the thing. I am uglier than the Oops. thing. From, no, I'm talking about from the Adams Family, not the movie. I don't know, the thing from the Adams Family was pretty nice. I mean, how much it, how much things could you actually do with just a hand? No way, yeah. no way. Well, 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 maybe I'm thinking of the wrong thing. I'm thinking of that hairy thing that wore a hat. That was no, it. No, that's it. It. That's it. Okay, okay, it. Thing okay. was, he, he had some use. With a little hand. There's some things you can do with a hand. Well, but if you're just a hand, you really can't do that much. But you I can do the most of my places. <laughs> It's the hand. It's awesome. Case closed. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah. So pretty much, um, Steve was arrested for making threats of Osama bit, of Osama, saying he would kill him. Yes. Which was hilarious. I read his testimony. He's like, I'm not racist, but those that Jewish scum. I'm like, he's racist. He's not racist, but he's anti-Semitic. You know what I mean? Not to mention the Hollow Earth theory basically goes back. It has Nazi ties that basically Does? are of that mindset. But this was like way before Nazism even existed. This is like exactly. It was actually at the start of uh, religion itself. I mean, Shangri La, Hell, and a few other places actually can correspond. Well, actually, I'm I'm referring to the guy he refers to mostly. This guy named Cyrus Teed, who who I love the guy's story. He pretty much made a convent. Saying that he was a messiah and shit in Etico, Etzio, um, Esto, um, Florida, where a few years later there was an altercation with fort with the nearby fort where he got pistol whipped, and he died a few years later because of his injuries, and then a hurricane occurred and it swept his coffin out to sea. I love it, like like either either he was a messiah or God hated him. <laughs> Because God loved him so much that he gave him a special burial. God loves burials at sea, I guess? Probably. Yeah! God's a sailor. Yeah, <laughs> I can I can say that. God has a, a pretty messed up history of doing things, but then again, he's not really good at solving problems. Um, hey, if, uh, if your kids are being rowdy and they're making fun of somebody, you know, you put them in timeout and you tell them, hey, listen, you know, if you, if you want people to treat you nice in the future, you got to treat them nice and stuff. You know, we would, we would talk to the child and that kind of thing. Uh, with, with God, uh, you know, he does the same exact thing, except he does it with two grizzly bears and kills them. <laughs> yeah. See, my, bit, my favorite little story in the Bible would have to be the story, story of Sodom and Gomorrah. Basically, oh, with Lot and his daughters? Yeah, basically two cities are basically like the scum of the earth in the eyes of the almighty creator of the universe. And he basically sends a tornado to turn everybody into pillars of salt. And then his wife turns back and looks, and she basically gets turned into a pillar herself. And then his daughters have sex with him. Like, really? Yeah, that's it's even... But you got to remember, the Bible is littered with incest. I mean, look at how humans came into creation. Well, also, but like, think of this. Like, like you know, the best people in Sodom and Gomorrah... And you knew that this guy was going to lose his wife, and his daughters would have his way with him. I mean, shouldn't you have just killed the daughters? Would have made more sense. Yeah, I mean, you killed the daughters. I mean, I mean, you can't rape your wife. I mean, you could rape your daughters, but, well, he was drunk. But you can, but not... And he got drunk, and he got drunk twice. Okay. That's the other thing. I'm like, the first time, well, I got so I drunk, I, I, what the hell happened? And the second time, I was like, <laughs> yeah. how the hell did they lower him to drink him again? You know, like, Lot was drunk and yeah, got drunk by his daughter, so it's not Lot's fault. And they thought that they were the last people on Earth. Uh, we, we so, I know that, but how they get Lot no, no, drunk no, no, twice? Yet, there, but, <laughs> with wine? No, 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 but like, like once he drank before and he woke up, he like, I don't remember what the fuck happened yesterday. Then he, then he's like, why the fuck would I drink again? Because I feel like shit, you know? And, and the other question is, where the fuck they get all the wine? They probably took it out with them. They probably had donkeys of just carrying wine. That was their major purpose in life. Carry our wine so we can get our father drunk. That's the whole reason they brought along Campbell's. All right, we um, we we brought an educated gadfly onto this. Do you want to do you want to discuss um, do you want to discuss your channel or what you do or your position? Oh, my, uh, my channel is basically there to antagonize people for the most part. <laughs> no, um, it's fantastic. <laughs> But I antagonize people with knowledge. 
I was gonna say, can we go on with the topic? Yeah, no, um, yeah. I'm I mean, I mean to... can we can we go on to the other half of the topic if the first half didn't work out? Yeah. Uh, that, uh, by the way, if we're going back to the topic in Lot, don't forget Lot did the offer the people of the town his daughters instead of the guests he had in the in the room. Yes, that too. But what about conspiracy theories? Um, I believe that conspiracy theories are is a, are just a massive conspiracy theory. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's, that's something. It's a big, it's a big <laughs> joke. Doesn't the the the, the uh, guy that Lord Stephen Christ guy doesn't he yes, think does. like like we never uh, landed on the moon? Yeah, he doesn't think we yeah. landed on the moon. He doesn't think that satellites are in orbit. He doesn't. He thinks they're mostly like th- this. Makes no sense at all, by because. I mean, what kind of glass can reflect uh, fucking radio waves? I mean, shit. I mean, you need like 30 feet of lead to even black gamma rays, I think it was, if I remember correctly. Also, he's only 99% sure Australia exists. His idea of what the universe is, is basically just one glass encasement. He thinks no, that... no, no, no. It's a little more complicated than that, honestly. It's it's like pretty much the sun and the moon is a giant battery that's in the center of the inside of the Earth. It's like where the Earth's core would be, I guess you could say. Where the Earth's mantle is, I guess you could say. There's no mantle, it's just space. But then, like, at the edge of the mantle, if you're looking from the Earth, you're seeing a giant glass sky, a giant piece of glass with ice. And inside the crust, you'd see us. That's where we are. In other words, total bullshit. Well, yes. Yes. Yeah. Because oh, it yeah. makes no sense, because, you know, if the sky was so reflective, it could fucking reflect x-rays and shit. I mean, can't we use that? Couldn't, they, couldn't militaries use that shit to find where their military, you know, people are and shit? Like, say, hey, you know, sonar and shit off the sky. Let's, I let's see shit. you. I have, an, I have an interesting question for you, edu- educated gadfly. You uh, wrote that objective does not mean absolute. No, they're two different terms. Yes, absolute morality means that saying stealing is wrong, absolutely, in, in every single case, even if it's for your survival, then it is immoral. Objective just is a um, position of where the morality comes from, not how absolute or contingent on circumstances the morality is. So would you argue that there is objective morality then? No, I'm a moral nihilist. Oh, that's cool. Same boat, yeah. <laughs> which makes a which makes a lot of interesting because that really helps me um, piss off a lot of atheists because it's just fun, <laughs> especially when they call God evil and the Bible immoral, and it's just I'll laugh with the Christians on that one. I don't know. I I still think uh, that that it's pretty fucked up what God may have done in the Bible. I mean, God doesn't have a really good history. Let's put it that way. Well, he doesn't have history. This actually, this actually might be able to to intertwine into the original topic. Were you here at the beginning of the show, Educated Gadfly? Uh, no. Okay. Well, no. well, we started this, the show initially uh, with Ryu's, uh, I guess, contention on on what she thought about the subjugation of women in religion, and I think you might be able to uh, comment on that since you are a nihilist. It might be interesting to hear what you have to say about the way women were treated or are apparently treated in religions and what you, you, you want me to make like an ethical content comment on how women are treated yes uh, so you want a moral nihilist to make an ethical comment the, yeah just because you don't believe in sub or objective morality doesn't mean you have a you don't have a subjective opinion yet oh right? yeah i don't li- i mean yeah i don't like it but you know i'm not going to call it immoral or evil i'm just going to call it an action that i happen not to agree with i mean i'll so I'll, I want, I'd like for them not to be oppressed and, you know, held back, but I'm not going to say you ought not to do that. Yeah, not to interject there, but when you do something like that, I'm of the old mindset of evil triumphs when good men do nothing. So basically you're just sitting by to let the action, by letting it happen, and you're sitting by and letting it happen, you're basically giving it merit in some way and or fashion. 
Not if only it was that, a democracy, not only I'd that, vote, but I'd vote for women's law, for laws overturning that. If I have an option to end it, my value system, I would try to end it. But do I have a way to end female oppression in Iran? I, women's rights, basically protesting for women's rights and my, basically using that as a what rights? For what rights? Michael, Michael, what right? Um, calm down, please. Uh, Atheist Coffee had something to say. I was just saying, uh, not only that, but it seems to me to be somewhat akin to solipsism, where you can sit there and you can postulate that you are the only person that exists and everybody else is the um, imaginings of your own mind. Um, or, like, like you say, oh, these things don't exist, it's not morally wrong or ever or anything, you're not going to say that, but you're going to go out and you're going to live your life as if it is. Um, you're yeah. going to, you know, That's it's it, it, the, in, practic, in, in practice, in all practicality, um, you, you will live as if there are these realities, these moral realities. Yeah. No, you, I, I, all right, Gatfly, you go. I'll admit, I'll, in reality, I'm going to act any certain way. When I sit back and start thinking about the nature of things, I'm going to think a bit li- diff- more loosely than I act practically. I think we all do that. It's not but, it's like... I, I think being a I think being a moral nihilist just has to do with on an existential basis. It doesn't mean that you're going to live as if there is morality because you recognize that there is no morality in at least every single action um, that I witness or or that I participate in. And I, I look at it from my own subjective standpoint. Whereas I, I feel like I want to per- perpetuate life and happiness. I understand that that's not necessarily a right thing to do, and I can see moral atrocities from my perspective, but it doesn't mean, it doesn't necessarily make you a spectator immediately, and I think that that's the misconception, because it doesn't mean that you condone every behavior, it just means that under some circumstances you recognize that every behavior is condonable at some extent. It's like um, I, I told people on a hangout after one of Victor's cases, a hangout and morality came up. This is what I told the person. Don't think morally. Think integrally. That's that's how I think. I think with my own integrity. Uh, so I don't rape because, you know, I have no need to do that. I have no need to steal. Um, these things that people considered consider immoral, I, what need do I have to do these things? They're not part of my value system, and if somebody and if they were part of somebody's value system, and they decide to go rape someone, and the only reason I use that is because people go to the extreme in these small situations, and that's the only reason I jump to that. My value system would say, "Hey, I want that person punished, not because it's the right thing to do, or to seek justice, it's because I don't want to live in a society that allows that to happen." So when we entertain the notion of laws, we're not really entertaining the notion of what is moral. We're entertaining the notion of, as a society, what what actions do we not want to live with? Might doesn't make right; it negates right. You don't have to worry about this idea. Is but it right sounds right? like it sounds like you're talking about a purely selfish morality where it takes into consideration what who's you not feel. selfish. It, uh, it's not it's not so much a, a, a one that that empathizes with other people, and perhaps you you would. Take a stand and say that this hurts not particularly me, but it hurts somebody else. So I can take a stand against that. You're saying that it it comes from your own integrity. It's your moral code and, and your to kind of right and wrong is is something that comes from you is about you, whether you feel comfortable or not. If I may, I would say I would honestly say morality is simply because we both because we have empathy and we can understand that people. Because you don't assume solipsism. If you assume solipsism, you assume that the reality is just a video game, practically. Um, you assume people exist, and because you can empathize with them, you assume they feel the same things you do. So, we can, even what? if we deal with empathy, does that empathy create an inherent? Well, we'll use the word "ought." Just be, let's it say, it just makes because. it. It makes it makes it so then you really can't do whatever you want. It makes a barrier. It makes it so. You can't be just, you can't be like running around shooting people and stuff because in the end, bad shit will happen to you because people feel the same things you do. People will feel sorrow for the people that you kill. People will go after you. People get angry. People get sad. People yeah, and get... I would say let them. If I did something to someone, my code doesn't disallow people from seeking 
vengeance, which is essentially what all the justice system really is, is third party vengeance. That's all it really is. We go to this third party who's neutral and we say, hey, I want vengeance against this person because they... Well, not in the whole something. world, though. There's, there's a huge uh, swing towards rehabilitation, and I think that's what our justice system should be striving for. Um, can, I, can I rebut what you said, Atheist Coffee? Yeah, go ahead. Um, you, like, you, you recognize, you said that it was some sort of social or, or some sort of uh, selfish perspective that he was basing his morality on. And the irony I feel in your comment is that empathy is essentially selfish. You think of yourself in another person's uh, position, and you think that all it is is the selfish selfish projection of your feelings onto another, and that's how you... I don't think so. I think it's that you you can identify with with a person suffering, and you can see how a person can hurt. Just like, well, yourself does always enter into these decisions. I mean, you can see how it would affect you, and so you know how it would affect them. And so even though this particular thing may never affect you, you can take a stand against something that yeah. only hurts somebody else. I would agree. I mean, I don't um, understand how it's self The realistic knowledge series because you're still factoring in how you would feel if this certain event happened to you. So well, okay, you could argue. But aren't you attempting to put yourself in someone else's perspective still meaningful? Well, no. meaningful. To you, it can be meaningful. No, 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 not, not like that. Not but it's still, it's still you're trying to understand them, even if you're still trying to understand that person. Even though you're doing it through your shoes, because the only thing you know is from your shoes, you could, you could, you could, you know, you really can't deny that, right? You cannot actually assume what they're thinking. You only can assume from what you think they think, right? Right. So. Yeah. So, so pretty much that's the best you can do. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where you're going with that strife. I mean, I'm saying I'm saying empathy is more of a social construct, not a selfish construct, because it's our means of communicating. Because well, it's not because if it was selfish, it would have not worked. Well, there I don't is, think it's contradicting. Because I you need you need two people to reproduce. Given number one, so you cannot be well, selfish in a sense. You don't there's think an irony in what you're talking about. Say. What? There's an irony in what you're talking about, strife, and I'll outline it here. The irony uh, is in order to preserve your selfishness, in order to get what you want out of life, you may have to enact empathy to do so. Um, It doesn't necessarily mean that you cast everyone aside to to promote yourself or or to perpetuate your own existence. I mean, you could do that, but you will end up not perpetuating your own existence. If it is selfish and the main goal is to preserve the self, then if you go and you act against everyone else's wishes, you can see that that wouldn't end up in you pre- preserving yourself. That would, what do you mean by preserving yourself, though? Because in the end, you're not preserving yourself. You're preserving something that is an extension of self, like your child. You know, your parents Your parents love you and stuff. I'm talking about life act- on an individualistic principle. I'm talking about my life. If I were to go raping and killing and murdering people then I, the chances are that I might get the death penalty. That's not to say yes, that... Yes, and, you, and that's the end of your life, though. But I'm saying right. when you have a child and stuff, you're not extenuating from self. You're actually, you know, you're actually going from something that's going to be longer after you, in a sense, your uh, legacy. Yeah, I have to interject. Go. Uh, no. um, just to add to what's actually being said here, I, I sort of view empathy in sort of the same context as sir, but I view it from more of an evolutionary trait. It's something oh, yeah, that's yeah, that, that, our evolution that's what I from primates, and it's basically been refined throughout our evolutionary tree. The I whole idea empathy. of, or go ahead, sir. I was just going to say empathy. If it didn't work, it would have never lasted. You know, what I mean, that's what I was exactly. Say. Strike. You know, let him make his point. And just going back to that fact, it's something that is instinctual, based off the what he's about reproduction. It's part of our whole evolutionary process of basically finding a mate. It goes back to that fact at its core dynamic. I mean, the idea of killing, that's basically something that in its rawest confines should only be for when somebody messes with your personal property or basically insults you. It's basically like the concept of hate. I mean, you shouldn't hate somebody outside of them basically doing something to you personally and seeking revenge. I mean, revenge is... Go ahead. 
Go ahead, sir. I, I was going to comment that I honestly think the whole reason primates like us would kill is for safety. Like, you know, we have the flight or fight response, in a sense. So, you know, if there's a situation where, because, in a sense, the mentality, it's either us or them, is even within a species, you know what I mean? Like, either it's my family or their family who survives, you know what I mean, for this limited supply of food. So, either I kill them to, take, to make sure that they won't take my food, or either they kill me so that I can't take their food. So, either it's more of a fight response that I guess would be stimulated in that situation. <clears throat> Does Rio have a point on this? I, you started saying something and we cut you off. Uh, we, I think we already moved on from that. I just said I don't think it's contradicting like empathy and selfish and being selfish. It's, to me, it seems kind of the same thing. You, you, be, you are selfish, so you think of, like you said, if I go around raping and killing people, I'm going to be punished for this. If I if I don't get along with people, I'm going to be alone and I'm going to be I'm going to be suffering. So the you can be moral and selfish, and I don't I don't think it's contradicting. Um, well, in, in that situation, you basically have very similar to what Locke described. Is that when we're in a society, if I do something that against your rights, well, he believed in natural rights, then you have entered into a state of war with society so that means society now has the ability since you have violated someone's right society now has the ability to your rights are now defunct it's like it's the reason why i support cap, capital con, uh, the death penalty is because once you kill someone you to me you for if we can prove it and i mean you know pretty doggone well not just you know i think to sus sustain the death penalty the level of no ability that you commit that crime is needs to be set very high. But to me, if you do that, you you lit, you do um, forfeit your right to life if you even had one. So, and I would say, and if somebody said, "Well, this person killed my mother," we'll, we'll always go back to the women. <laughs> uh, but then you would have in my system, if you felt it in, within your values to go kill that person who did that, I'd say go ahead. I mean, my system doesn't, you know, say, be just, be unjust, be immoral, do crime or do not. It's simply just do what's in line with your values. And as a society, we'll hammer out, we can, and we have, we hammer out the details of what was acceptable. Do, will we accept vigilante behavior? And the answer is no, because we have a criminal justice system based on lock again to do that work for us. I think, I think the point... I think the point of nihilism is it, is it breaks down the borders um, that we all we all put we all put up artificial barriers and artificial lines and we all think that um, that this is the way it should be uh, something that Michael was talking about um, I, since since you and Strife were going back and forth I, I got a very cursory uh, understanding of what you were talking about but you were talking about um, empathy in in an evolutionary sense right yes. And, and the border that nihilism breaks down in this point is the, the arbitrary value placed upon life, and specifically human life. That's why, there, that's why there is moral nihilism. That's not to say that we don't each have our own subjective you know, personal opinions on it, but, but it is to say that life is arbitrarily valued over the non-existence, essentially. Now, if, if that's what moral nihilism means, you know, like life... Has has like has no inherent value. No, I would. That's agree. not moral. That's, oh, okay. Then whatever the hell you call it, I would agree with. It, what moral nihilism is basically to some it, it does entail moral skepticism, and it's basically morality, no matter how it's formed, is a useful useful fiction. What he's talking about is getting to existential nihilism and also into near absurdism. Um, but moral nihilism is strictly. Morality, it's nice, it's useful, it's beneficial, but ultimately it's nothing. Um, one thing that um, I will always bring up in the mold, and when we talk about morality, is possibly the greatest atheist who's ever lived, David Hume. He thought of the idea of how is, how do we derive is from aunts, facts, and how, how we de deal with can we logically, and using intellect alone, derive a value from a fact. I have argued, and... I know it defends people. I have said that the Holocaust was merely an act. Whatever value you place upon it is your own. 
I've said it, and I'll defend that. Also, I had another, I, I was thinking I'll say something else. Oh, I heard someone say that we have evolved compassion, but the question becomes, uh, the, the fact that I've evolved compassion mean I ought to be compassionate. Well, isn't that self-destructive? Um, I mean, the reason that these things evolved, the reason that morality evolved, the reason that these 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 social constructs that help us to live together evolved is so we can prosper, so that we can survive, so that we can live together. And so, if you just say now you're going to reverse all that, and sure, it's it's Chris, useful. It yeah, it's 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 a useful thing. But then you're you're yeah. If you just say something like like the Holocaust was just an act. You're 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 not counting. Yeah, you, you're. If we lived in a world like that, if everybody thought that, well, yeah, that's we that's give, just going. We can give these things their value. I'm. A, if you want to give the Holocaust the value of atrocity, I'm there with you. I think it was a horrid event. However, I take a step back and re, and think. Can I lo Can I reasonable? Can I using intellect alone derive the value of an atrocity from the fact of the Holocaust? And I'm not. I'm not trying to invalidate your opinion of it being tragedy. I'm just trying to say. No, no. It's it's not an effect. opinion. It's not an opinion that it was a tragedy. It's it's that that type of behavior is 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 self destructive to the species. This. I mean, it's it's a dead end. I think I think you're arguing a fallacy there, atheist coffee, because I um it. It, what it does is it promoted favoritism of the species. So it said kill all the Jews, but once all the Jews are gone, what then? You just you just well, no, the, the ideology wouldn't have died. They would have found somebody else to kill. This is the, the it, it, it it was self destructive than... at its core. You gotta think it was at its, it's core dynamic. That, that's 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 a speculative argument. That's no no it no, isn't it's not. because they the, no. were an Aryan race. Basically, you're trying to get of the mindset they're taking out one people. Once they're done with Jews, you don't think they're going to start on other people that they are weren't, their genetic they and they, they weren't Jews. just taking out one people. There were other people on the list. There were other people in the camps. And once they, you, the purification wouldn't have ended. They would have kept purifying, exactly. and the elites would have kept doing it. This is this was this is who they were. Oh, okay. This is, it, but your argument boils down to when they got done purifying, when they finished purifying, who would there be There was no end to it. It was an arbitrary line they set in the first place. They were going they had to no politicians, they were going to enemies, they were going to even people within their own culture. I mean, fuck, they were going after even people in their in yeah. Germany. I mean, heck, that's, they are going... That's why you have to take a stand on these issues, and you can't just say, well, it's just a thing like every other thing. You're right. Heck, the mentally handicapped. I mean, those people would still be. Born. They were actually the first. They would have just kept killing them, right? The mentally handicapped. They would just keep killing yeah. them as they were born. And humanity at the time. This is what World War Two was about. Humanity took a stand and said, "We're not going down that road. Well, we're it going wasn't down other that road. only." Have like I, I ever said, said? Have I ever said? Let's get rid of values altogether. No, like I said, it doesn't necessarily condone a behavior to recognize it as not objectively moral or immoral. It doesn't. That doesn't mean that you condone. But that doesn't mean that you won't contest a behavior because if you're going off of my definition which well, what I said earlier was to perpetuate life and to perpetuate existence and happiness then obviously that runs contrary to what I prefer well and then go I one step further and have the courage of your convictions and if you are going to label it then do so well, say it's wrong say that that's detrimental and don't just say I, I will or I can say it do it well, that's the difference between, like, I think that's the difference between uh, being honest with yourself and, and, and not, is you recognize that your your position is arbitrary. You recognize that your feelings are arbitrary, and you put the arbitrary value on life. Is I think that that's akin to the presuppositionalist saying, well, you can't know anything for certain. And sure, when you look at a moral judgment, um, it's the same kind of thing. We're talking about the best possible scenario that we can come up with at the at the moment, and we can say in in this instance that that was not the best possible scenario, so we shouldn't do it. And we sh we could say that um, define uh, best. Who's uh, best are we going for? In the Holocaust, in the eyes of the Germans, that was the best. Yeah, no, um, they, they, situation. they were but they were wrong, and it was demonstrated that they were wrong. And I mean, they, most of the Germans knew it too, and they were marched into the camps afterwards. It's so just, it was not the. That kind of an ideology was not the best to pro to 
um, go to try to get to obtain this master and pure race. Yes, well, who's yeah, best are we going have, for? It wouldn't have done it. It was a faulty uh, premise in the first place. Exactly. So what what are you saying? Can I just say it seems similar to what I was saying? Like, I mean, they saw the. I mean, well, okay, Hitler, Hitler himself, and people like Hitler saw the Jews as a threat. This this or them mentality, which I would say even dates back to you know us being primates because it seems like to me with even families and stuff they would do the same thing they would fight for the food but the thing is over time when human when humanity began to go into our agriculture and such when we could own feed, when we could feed everybody pretty much we don't have to fight for scraps we don't have to fight and pretty much societies then have gone to the direction of well killing's wrong because we don't need to kill anymore for food we can always just trade we can always be all, we could do those things instead of killing. You see, this is the difference. You, we sit back and we can talk about it as if it's an abstract idea, but when you get to it, when you look at the boots on the ground, you look at the men who uh, gave their lives in, in the tens of thousands um, to, to fight against this type of oppression, it, you, you can't say that, that uh, well, it, it was, it's just, you know, you can't make a moral judgment on that. And what I, you know what? Thousands and thousands did and died for it. Somebody, we're bringing too many people on. Let's get Ace out of this Does that have anything to do with what I just said? Um, uh, Atheist Scott, well, uh, okay, so you're, you're, you're basically saying that you, you can, can uh, you say, okay, you make a judgment on it from your own personal perspective, which is what Gadfly and I are both essentially saying. We say we make a judgment on it. From Not a personal perspective. No, no. Said, go ahead and call. It, to quote you verbatim. You said, "Go ahead and call it wrong." Right. Call it wrong. Yes. But you, you see know, the base. What's, what's the basis? From anybody else calling it wrong to do what we're doing. And this is why you have to have a scientific basis for your beliefs, for your, for calling it that. Like I said, the reason I said it was a faulty premise is because there's actual science behind this. When you look at the, gen, you look at genetics, you look at, you look at social dynamics, you look at everything. You can have a scientific basis for saying that it's wrong. See, we, that's you're, you're exactly right when you say you can't just go off your personal opinions and everybody's personal opinions is just that. That's right. That's why we have to go back to the science. And if you can bring evidence forward in the in the discussion, I can bring evidence, and then you can bring evidence forward to say to show that. A Holocaust scenario is wrong, and, and that kind of purification of the race is wrong and doesn't work. You can show that scientifically, and uh, I'm ultimately arguing from a scientific basis in that, in that respect. Well, the only the only thing you'd be arguing, which, uh, like, I don't think any of us would disagree with you. The only thing that you would be arguing is that that you can't um, perpetuate existence that way. Or you wouldn't you wouldn't do as well to perpetuate a human existence that way. You can also quantify suffering and quantify pain. You can uh, scientifically. There's form. neurons that fire off for these. They're base. They're base chemical products that make these happen inside the human brain. That's you where the science. You can quantify facts life. as long as you want to. But I mean, the question is, how do you derive a value from those facts? It is a fact that we cause pain. Um, can you care to derive a value for, of pain or a value of not causing pain from that mere fact alone? Here, well, I, think I, 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 got, find, I think I got it. I, think I, I got find it. that is just kind of a, a, a philosophical dead end when you, when you just exactly. you say those kind of things. Yes, technically you can say it, but it gets us nowhere in, in practice in real life. Wait, wait, um, we quick. all so know the answer. Have, so you have a, a you value pragmatic uh, things that are practical. It's just like when the theist earlier asked us, are you sure you're looking at your computer right now? You know what? And, and you, you, there's, there's some kind of philosophical argument that says, well, how can you be really sure? But you know what? And when it comes right down to it, I'm looking at you're it and I can say that yeah. I am. Yes. And when it comes right down to it in these moral judgments, it's exactly the same thing for each and every one of us. We go our own ways and we know exactly what we're talking about and what the answer is. Well, for can those philosophical arguments no. we have, we actually have two different modes. You have the matrix which is also called the dream argument, and you have uh, the solipsistic argument. They're rather different, but the question is, what is, uh, does the computer, in rea what, what is reality? It's not, it's not. It's what you can point to. It's not a philosophical contention. All, all you can do is empirically um, identify what is in the, at most, if we assume the matrix, the best you can do is like, okay, you can identify the constructs of the matrix. You can empirically I'm not going to assume that any more than I'm going to assume a god. 
can I can I ask a question? What makes um the value of having no value and the value of having value greater than each? That's the point, Strife. Yeah, and I was just gonna say, could it be it's that subjective. the idea that could it be the idea of us wanting value is just so that we can one up one other person? It's understanding the emotional complexity of it, how it fires off in the neur neural system of the human brain. Understanding where they come from is basically how you understand what merit is inquired and in, they basically have. What happens is basically there's a scientific method behind figuring it out. Atheist coffee is basically correct in this point. I mean, we can say that we're in an imaginary world that's like the Matrix. I mean, hey, that's up there with God for me, personally. But there's an evolutionary it standpoint from where this stuff comes from. I mean, the ability to be compassionate has an innate, innate sense of correlation with our evolutionary history. I mean, it being linked to there, saying that it, we can basically just turn it off and it doesn't have merit, is basically like trying to turn off a part of the human condition. I mean, don't get me wrong, there's parts of the human condition we have to overcome to become a better species, but you're basically just trying to turn off a part of yourself at the genetic level, which is unrealistic, but that's this, all I'm trying to say. No, it comes down, it, it, it's, it's really not like... I, I I feel like you misrepresent the position, and, and we're saying we're saying that that no, nothing is wrong, but, but we, and we live our lives that way, and it's it's saying it's a, it's a recognition, at a person, and it's not it's not like it's not equivalent to the presuppositional argument because we don't derive we don't derive what we ought to do or what is re real from it. Uh, like you can take a scientific basis and you can put arbitrary value on pain and arbi arbitrary value on pleasure and that kind of goes with what we were going to before. Um, yeah. uh, anybody like anybody can put these arbitrary but like you to say that okay people feel pain and people don't like pain. We understand that subjectively. Other people like causing other people pain, it brings them pleasure. So in that scenario, we don't have to put it in a, any specific scenario, is the people gaining pleasure from causing pain, which is more valuable? Those, those, that pe those people's pleasure or the other people's pr pain? And I would agree that the mate, oh, sorry. I think that's something that we decide as a society, not as individual people. Agreed. In yeah, society, kind of you you decide that you don't want people to cause other people pain, so you punish those who do. Agreed. Yeah, this is why I say the mind of society negates any of these, negates any of this stuff. Society can do because as the mind to impose that valuation of well, we don't want to cause other people pain, therefore you're not going to do. It has that ability to, and I would agree. The matrix is unverifiable. You can't. We don't have any way to verify are we in a matrix unless somehow we were taken out of it. Well, I mean, I see what you're saying, um, realistic nihilists. Uh, I mean, in in right at the base of everything, I mean, we are particles in motion. I mean, we were, you know, uh, the atoms in our body were forged in stars. I mean, these these things that we feel and think these are abstract. These are ideas. Um, and what is the value placed upon them? And I understand nihilism in that sense. Um, I think in a society, it's like we're arguing two different arguments because I think we agree we're just putting different spins on it. Right. Well, here it comes down to this, um, and this is this is the shutdown for the presuppositional argument, and this is the shutdown for for moral nihilism in in my sense too. Uh, um, it comes down to this. Nothing can take away relativism. Relativism exists, and relativism is how we based our morality. That's why nihilists are always, always equated to relativists. That's why that happens. Uh, because nothing can take away from me looking at this computer screen, regardless of whether or not I'm in the matrix, does not matter, because I'm looking at the computer screen. And that's the point that you guys try to derive. It doesn't matter because if I'm in the matrix, then in the matrix I'm looking at the computer screen. If I if it, I'm in God's world, if I'm in if if I'm just a bunch of mathematical equations, it doesn't matter because under the stipulations I'm still looking at this computer screen. And is under that the why, is that why they hate relativists so much? Because pretty much even if I was relative in the matrix, the computer screen's relative to me. Just like if I wasn't, the computer's still relative to me. 
Well, well, who's who's they? Who hates relativists? Um, anti-relativists. <laughs> of course, the thing is, I run this same kind of thing again. I'm, I don't pick on atheists just for this. I also run this. I actually run the whole we can create our morality as, ourselves against against what I hear is like atheists have no morality. I run almost the same relative thing against them and the whole integrity thing. So, don't think I just, you know, go up against atheists on the, the morality um, issue. I'm very... I didn't even realize you were talking specifically about atheists. No, no it's just, you know, I just, because I tend to attack both the atheist moral position and the Christian the, well, theist moral position. I just wanted to put it out there that I'm not this... I don't, you know, just... Just I'm not one-sided on this issue. I also and I've I talked to theists to say we are we can be good without God. Yeah, well, it's just coffee. Um, you remember you remember you were talking about that uh, Zen Buddhism basically, right? And I I would assert that they are all moral nihilists. They they all go into the same uh, relativistic position. Um, with of unity, they all go into the relativistic position of unity, and that you know you hear about the happiness that they find, and you you think about the accomplishments they have, and that it just it ends up uh, there's this uh, it, it ends up basically you, the way you feel if you can if you can feel um, completely morally nihilistic, you will never feel suffering. And the thing about it, though, is what 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 mostly in in Zen Buddhism they have found is that um, I think I forget exactly what the quote was. It was something like the householder can't um, delve into it. The person that has a family, he has cares, he has to worry about the average life. They they found you had to kind of separate yourself from the cares and responsibilities of life in say a monastic type of way to really you'd be able to sit there, cross your legs, you know, and and meditate. And and to be in that nihilistic kind of relativistic situation completely, because like I say, like like we all agree, uh, like solipsism, you get up from the computer and you go and you live your life as if, you know, th things really do have meaning, as if there really are other people, you know, and and you can't escape that. I think uh, in in society, um, in our culture, you you can't really live it. I mean, yes, technically, everything is relative and we're all just particles, but you know, we have to, to live together, uh, assign values to Most things. of the time, if you live it, you just end up in an insane asylum. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, yeah, no one, no one, yeah, no one's really contesting it. It's just, it's just one of those positions that uh, we feel, I can't speak for Gadfly, but we, we feel more comfortable um, and more honest in, in this position. And that's, I'm just assuming his position as well as mine, but... That's essentially what I feel. I feel I feel more honest with myself. If because if I wanted to hold on to something like morality, I would hold on to it dogmatically. You know, I would hold on to it just like the religious hold on to their religion. And I, I think there's something wrong with that. And I think that you need to look at things with a relativistic perspective in order to get uh, to where we all want to be. Uh, do you have anything to comment on that? Uh, Michael. Just the fact that it's basically bringing philosophy into it to too much of a intricate detail. You're basically bringing into it the mindset that just because we've evolved to this point, you're basically trying to overanalyze it. There's an evolutionary standpoint in play when just let's use empathy as the example that we were going with before. There's an evolutionary basis in which that exists. When you bring philosophy too far into it, you get movements like this. That makes sense. Um. Yeah, I, I, uh, I I'm, I'm having a problem uh, understanding where your contention with this is. You, you have a problem with this, uh, us bringing too much philosophy into it. Yes, because when you get into that, you get too far into the metaphysics. There's a metaphysical side to philosophy. You're basically bringing metaphysics into the natural world. I mean, to a degree, philosophy belongs to it. I mean, to at its own level, there's a 
process that goes on that helps move science along from a philosophical standpoint. But when you overanalyze from a philosophical standpoint, you basically draw yourself into a corner. You basically end up with movements like religion, like we're stuck in a matrix or something of that mindset. I mean, if you get away from the science behind what's going on, you basically end up as an overbearing philosopher would be the best way to put it probably. Well, just to let you know, while, while you're overemphasizing science, science is based on philosophy. Yes, so that's what I... It's, it's, it's not this... You're assuming... It's not this, you know, great pragmatic... You want to be all pragmatic and everything, but your system that you're trying to stay with, you know, the whole pragmatist and let's stay with science, you, you're still basing your work on philosophy, so... Essentially, if you look at Wikipedia, literally, and there's a website I can give you, every single page, in the, pretty much every single page in the English Wikipedia redirects, uh, boils down to philosophy. I don't, I don't like, I don't like that. I don't like that line of argumentation. I feel like I should, you should address his point on it. I mean, I guess I kind of see fundamentally where you're going with, I, I think it's kind of playing a trump card to say everything boils down to philosophy, though. I, I, I don't like it personally. Although I understand what everything you're boils to say. down to reality, I guess would be the same. Exactly. That's and and met and 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 physics. I want to point down. metaphysics. I guess would you say we assume upon reality, while science is what reality actually is. I would like, I would like to address what Michael said, um, and that is that you you said we go into a medical phys- metaphysical realm, but as nihilists we don't believe in a metaphysical realm. So that's there's an irony there. And I don't think we're going into metaphysics. In fact, I think it's more going into metaphysics to say that there is aughts because of the science. That brings metaphysics into it, and we deny metaphysics. So I, I think you're, you're um, arguing uh, for, from misconception, as far as I can understand, because we deny metaphysics, and that's why we're in the predicament that we're in. Uh, you want there to be a metaphysical good. And you want that metaphysical good to be what you say science advocates. You know, uh, science doesn't advocate the propagation of life, and you know, there's no, there's no way to say that nicely. That's just the way it is. Science does not, you know, work to propagate life. It just, um, it just measures reality. So it doesn't propagate life or, through cellular evolution. Basically, cells. Reproducing at a cellular rate and basically combining into multicellular organisms. That in itself is a science. Gen- genetic diversity is another one. It's a measurement. It's a measurement of reality. But it doesn't tell you... It shows exponential growth. Yeah, but it doesn't tell you where it needs to go. You want to argue an ought from an is. I That's was going to say I disagree with what Michael's saying pretty much because I would say what I said earlier... Um, that um, pretty much it is what it is. It's and it's it, you can't really do an odd to it is. I just say it is what it is. So where where are we all on this? Because I, I I feel I feel pretty good. I mean I I think Michael has the biggest contention, and I think we should hear from him again uh, to say what I said. I, uh, I think I think Strife is coming from a good point, um, and I'd, st- I'd still like to hear what you think about what I said, um, Michael. For me, it's basically that we all possess an innate sensitivity to emotional status of other members of our species. It's basically of a humanist mindset. That makes sense? Yes. I, can I disagree? Go ahead. I disagree because, as I said earlier, um, I would say our primate... Um, socialness ends with family units, like you know, like like even other um, apes kill each other because of resources, just like we do. Yeah, but you do have tribes. Yeah, tribalism. No, no, but I'm, but I'm saying, I'm saying we it kill each other. It extends into tribalism. Would be my argument for that one, sir. What 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 do you, what do you mean by tribalism? Um, first uh, forms of modern America's man. number one. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a. A simplistic version of putting it, but basically the mindset that tribal units have of other tribes impeding on their local resources and their geographical location. I would say that it branches past the primalism of primates, well, uh, lesser primates, than 
and it basically comes into us because of the first tribes that actually came into existence of humanity. Well, you, you, well, you do have to think of this. If if I remember human history correctly, there was an event that killed ninety, I think, like ninety percent of humans, the human species. I think. Burst down to two thousand. Yes. Yes. So if you do think about it, most other family units of humans were destroyed, except for maybe like a couple of tribes, right? right? Yes. So pretty much you're left with the ideas of a few tribes and not of many. So in a sense, it's whatever those tribes do is what the future of humanity does. Right? That's basically how it played out, yes. Yeah, so that's pretty much what I would think would, would occur, that occurred. Pretty much whatever those... Like maybe I'm I'm just guessing maybe four or five I doubt there's more than twenty tribes um, of humans you know you know they still would kill each other of course which we do today but the ones that actually coexisted together actually went to the path of saying well us killing each other is wrong because why do we need to kill each other if we share resources equally because you don't. But did they say that, or did they say we should work together to kill them? Well, that too. But see, I like, think, I that think this that's is... the thing. That's the thing. That's the thing. I kind of get to agree well, with the whole. There's a secular morality that's evolved um, out of. I mean, we've evolved out of this tribalism. We still still have this these 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 tendencies um, in groups to you know go to war and kill other other tribes. But this, but this I, or I, them mentality, right? I think I think we, we have we've evolved a secular morality that, that, that has transcended our our biological um, drives in that respect. Um, uh, where we, 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 we place a value on human life even though some would argue that it's arbitrary. I think we do it anyways because we think we realize that that's the right way to go. I think you can't exactly show that because I would say it's not secular, but it's more of like a group. Well, I mean, it's secular as in it's separate from religious morality. It's something that we've come up with. Well, is like it it's a secular religion? humanist value. Well, isn't religious morality technically tribalistic morality? Well, I think there's, it's funny because when, when you look at humanism, like what humanism is, and that's the value, uh, valuing humans overall, all everything... Um, but uh, when you when you value you value humans over every other like you basically you value human emotion and feeling over every other living thing on earth and that that it's that, a tribalism that, in and of itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So pretty it, much, it pretty much this is an art is something we cannot escape as a species. We have to make something that we is and we can't we can't we got to say it's either us or them. So it's us the humans against any other kind of species out there. So we can kill them, and we'll be just fine with it. I think uh, I think educated gadfly wants to hear. Um, I think he he has a dissenting position on me saying reality. Is that what you're talking about? Well, no, just in general, you everybody was just like the whole point of the fetus being on here was to provide some sort of dissent. So everybody was just like, yeah, I agree. Yeah, you did an I excellent job. Did I excellent do my job. best. Yes. <laughs> But yes, I said in chat. Um, you, 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 I hear people. Oh, my saying, my point. Sorry for cutting you off, in education. Go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. I was just going to say, uh, while I said in the chat, for those who don't know, I said, um, and for everybody's talking about science, it's just like you keep using this word reality, yet you're not really telling me what reality is. But then if you want to say, well, reality is reality, welcome to the law of identity, which you say A equals A, but that doesn't describe A. I would have to say, for myself at least, though, um, not to cut you off, Edge, but um, what Atheist Coffee was saying about secular mindset coming from the tribal, basically evolving off the tribal mindset, is basically what I was, what I would have to say myself. That's basically the point of view that. Yeah, I, I agree. Sort of I agree. Myself. We haven't, we, like, this is the thing. I think we have an egotistical. No offense, but I think we have an egotistical set to try to make ourselves. Even the theists, well, even they have shown it, that we're somewhere above he animals, yet I think we've pointed out that what, well, I think I've explained a little bit, that it seems like to me we actually haven't even got at all far from our heritage. We still are our heritage, you know, like we are still apes. We still act oh. like apes do. We still have that. Man, I get that. 
Bane is coming from a position that says we have we are more than animals. But what he would say we're acting as is our flesh. We're acting out of the flesh, and we're the natural man where he is spiritually discerned. Um, that's that would be his contention is that we are more than a, and they would talk about the imago dei or what is known as uh, the image of God, which varies from consciousness, rationality. Um, it goes all with the idea of dualism. Um, but he would say, we are not animals. We are more than animals. And you're just acting from a different nature than he is. Well, the secular well, morality say, has transcended made, that. When you say you're made in the image of God, when you say everyone's made in the image of God, it's kind of a pointless claim because you're like saying, oh, well, I'm all in the image of a human. Okay, whoop de fuck well, do not really anything special. If you I, say, don't know, oh. I don't know what anything that if, if we were get, if we were to get into that in the creation of Genesis or 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 the creation story of Genesis when uh, I, I would have I'd have nothing to say about that. I can't even. Well, well not even. Well, that's all I have. It's I'm just we have a special that humans have this special that we are not just mere animals. We have a we have a spiritual side. Well, and that's just, what, it gets, that's just what I'm saying. I, I think it's egotistical. It. I, I honestly think, yeah. in my opinion, that maybe it was some idea that maybe some tribe of man actually thought to get over on another tribe of man, saying, hey, well, we got something better than you. We have a spiritual side. While the other one was like, what the fuck? You know, and they pretty much just killed the other guy. Because can, they I, can, I, um, can I pose a question to the group? Go ahead. My question to the group is, is why do... Uh, why do humans think, or, or why do did humans think? I'm not saying that we all do, but why do humans think that um, that there is something wrong with being animals, or there is something inherently superior about our nature? Well, that's Can the I, thing, because religion posited a soul, and we we it's in that way could see us ourselves transcending um, the fate of animals, so we didn't just die and didn't just rot in the ground. We there's something different from us, and we can think, we can we can contemplate our own existence, we can communicate through speech, and but I think it, that was our first and our our, our primal our first uh, attempt at making sense of of ourselves and the universe. But I think now that we've we've discovered things through science, we've discovered you know we are apes. We've discovered how we evolved. We've discovered where we came from. We've embraced that, and we've we found a way to live together that's that actually embraces the facts and religion is just a relic from the days before we knew these well, things and they just they have to reject the facts science to keep there. there. Science yeah, does have this issue of qualia. Let's uh let um let's let yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think basically why do we th why did we have the need to feel that we are better than animals because animals are either food or uh, slaves basically workers to to help us with agriculture or their food, so we should we need to be better than that. I mean, I mean, I honestly would say possibly with the whole this and them thing. I think if you did say them we were animals, and I think then possibly a theist would think, oh, then cannibalism is okay because you're killing another animal which is human, and because you know there's then you could use them as a source of food, and then you get all into issues. I think that's maybe my idea why. They would say you know, an interesting rebuttal to that would be, yeah, I guess you could you, uh, use that person for food. I guess if they were a useless person to you, you might want you might actually have a, a reason to do that. If if you were to say that, you know, why not just eat another person? The idea would be because another person could help me get food that I would prefer, and they could do it more continuously. So it's like. The same kind of argument, teach a man to fish and he'll uh, eat for a lifetime or give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you if you co cooperate with a human, there's nothing to say that you can't continue cooperating with him and getting more food and extend your potentiality that way. But in a situation where there is no other food, would you, would you go on trying to find food or would you rather just go eat the guy next to you? Well, what's the difference? See, look... Then you have to then you have to recognize that after that meal is done, um, what else are you going to have to eat? And well, that's, the thing, have, that's the would thing. Would you though. rather we'll die in we'll solitude, or would in the you... short term? In the short term, your belly will be full, but in the long term, or you could just make jerky, I guess, and then eat that later. But um, yeah, you could um. Yeah, I think though, even think in the okay. short term, even in the short term, that other person can help you hunt for food. Whereas if you eat him, then you're hunting alone. 
If right. you have no choice, then I guess you will be eating. <coughs> Wait, I got a question. Did Redline go to bed? No, he's he's hanging out in the chat, man. I don't see him in the chat. Are you are I'm you here, the one dude. posting the comments then? Yeah, that's me. I'm okay. here, dude. Relax. I understand you miss me and you love me and everything, but I'm here, so don't worry. It's cool, man. It's cool. Crisis averted. Calm down. Okay. Wait, you didn't say huh? shit. I thought Lord Superfest got to him. Wait, do you have any comments on what we were just talking about, Michael? It's interesting to hear your opinion. I'm basically with coffee on this one. What he was actually saying is completely where my mindset was going. Basically, the whole idea of secularist mindset spawning from a tribal mindset that would have happened about, I want to say, three to 4,000 years ago. Then that's basically, I, we started moving say. towards... Yeah, but Coffee started off by saying the secular mindset. Oh, well, I said with the tribalistic thing that happened. Yeah, but I would actually be with Sir and Coffee on this one. That's basically where my mindset goes. Well, we were, talking about, we were talking about the instance of, of, of cannibalism. If a uh, theist were to put you into that position where you equate humans to animals and that, you know, you, you derive a, a naturalistic type of morality... Uh, would it still be wrong to kill them? How would you counter that type of argumentation? Are there vegetables around that I could eat? I don't know. Say, well, in a... In a if there would be vegetables around, if there would be another source of <laughs> something I could use in uh, for energy, then no. I would actually stay away from the meat altogether. I would go for something that would be artificial instead of eating my, something of my own species. So I would I choose not to eat. I would choose to starve to death. Yeah, uh, when more starved to death would be. No, wait, wait, wait. Would you say it's morally wrong for those people that um, I I forget the guy who went to um the North Pole or was it Antarctica? I think I forget. I get those two mixed up. Um, who pretty much ran out of food, were in the freezing cold, and they end up eating. I think, like, you know, oh, oh, the people in the Rockies. That's a better one. The um, Dover party. The Donner party. Yeah. Yeah, that's a better. That's a better scenario. The I don't want to say that story. What? I don't even know anything about that story. Okay, pretty much this. Pretty much this group of um, these group of settlers were going west to California, I think, or Oregon, whatever, and they went over the Rocky Mountains. When they were going over the Rocky Mountains, a blizzard happened, and they got stuck up there. So pretty much they were stuck up there. They ran out of food, and pretty much they went resorted to cannibalism. Would you say they were morally right or wrong? Would you say what you would you say would be the <laughs> reason you would judge them for being wrong from what they did? Well, see, it, it, it comes down to what I said. It, it comes down to eventually, you know, you're only going to have one more person left to eat. And would you rather um, would you rather starve alone or starve in company? No, That's but the thing, the thing, and, the thing. And just a sec, a footnote for any theist watching this, thinking, oh, yeah, look at those atheists with their morally bankrupt system. They don't know it. You know what the Bible says? Yummy, that God's going to starve. The Bible says one of the God's judgments was to starve you out and make you eat, eat each other. So don't you foist that on us there. Just wanted to put that out there. Well, does it say the directly to theists, though? Does it say it? Or I thought, could, are you talking about something from Revelation? No, no. I think it's the Old Testament uh, where one of the curses of God when he... Uh, he, he says that, uh, um, and actually, it did happen at one point in the in the text that the mothers ate their children and things like that. And and uh, but it was one of the things. It was a curse. Is he, he would starve you, and you would. I forget exactly the context, but it, it's there. Uh, if there are any theists watching, I'll take you on as a challenge any day of the week, especially if you're a Christian. Um, I, I realize now is um, you said the show has to be two hours, right? Yeah. We're, I we're, mean, kept, we're getting down to the minute. Or 15 minutes left? Yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. So I guess everyone everyone knows that 15 minutes left. Uh, I haven't I haven't seen anybody else in the chat that seems to want to come on. Got a bunch of intellectual a giants. Atheist TV wants to come on. Yeah. No, he went to bed because his t his wife told him to. A smart man indeed. If like your wife is happy, you will be happy. No, you won't. Not gonna lie, I feel like a lightweight in comparison to the. Six other people in here right now. Why oh no, you held your own pretty really well. No, I thought you did. I thought you did really well. Thanks. Yeah, I we don't Steve. think we can feel like we, we need Steve in here. We gotta. Oh. Shut up. Don't, on, even, don't even speak his name no. again. 
bring his retardation and back. And with that, we thank you for turning in to the Lion Go Show. <laughs> we are going to end this before Steve? Stripe royally fucks it up with Steve. Um, just for Steve, Steve, I can pretend to be gagged. Just for you of what happened last night. Oh, man. He hasn't even contacted me back after I've sent him a copy of that. So exactly. He's speechless right now. It's all conspiracy. Conspiracy, I tell you! Grr. Okay, my my official position on conspiracy theories, just to make it poignant one more time, that all conspiracy theories are one is one giant conspiracy theory. You're a fucking troll. You want to know something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of what it. What is the whole point of a fly? The whole point of a fly's existence is to piss you the fuck off when you can't kill it. <laughs> it's it's practice. It's just like die, you bastard. The point of a fly is it's to eat shit. That's pretty much what the point of the fly was. Oh, that's mean. Track so, dude, that's to eat fly. shit and die? <laughs> eat shit and die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't we I, all I, eat shit and die, if you think about it metaphysically? <laughs> don't we all just eat shit and die? And literally, no. <laughs> Not literally, but just think about it. Yeah, you could call everything shit and be done with it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. Technically, if you eat dairy products, you do eat uh, somebody's uh, fecal matter, so... Yeah, so, so you do eat shit and then you die. Yes. There's a certain food that only that can only form after it's been digest. Well, after it's gone through the bowels and uh, deposited afterwards. That sounds cool. What is it? I have no idea. I just know that. Well, I, I, I know eggs. Dead. Eggs are a chicken's period. Oh my actually, gosh. Oh, I actually, actually, I have a funny story about that. I actually was making eggs one day when I opened an egg, blood came out. Like, you like know, seriously. I think like, this, I like, this conversation has gone just. <laughs> Let's, oh god. Get the final oh, statement. Amazing. The last, last 15 minutes came around, we're all, you know, not all Losing of you, our, but uh, mostly uh, me, where, you know, I'm sitting here stroking my beard going, yes, 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 indeed, quite. Right, you know, and then all of a sudden, you know, fucking, yeah. it's a brick wall, and we start talking about chicken periods and fucking whatever, <laughs> man. Gotta stop this. This was strife, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, strife. <laughs> the madness of strife. Yeah, but uh, you know, you you can eat like egg, a chicken in a, in egg, and it's still okay. But you can't eat uh, meat and milk. That's wrong. You can't eat what? Meat and milk together. Meat and milk. I'm talking with. Oh, yeah. calf in, in its mother's milk. Yeah. That's oh yes. yeah, it's in one of the um, versions of the. It's, and I think I want to say Deuteronomy for some odd reason. Yeah, because it's from Mount Hinnon. Hinnon. It's okay. Um, I, I I had steak today, so it's okay. It was made from a baby cow. You can taste its soul. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, it's yes. funny. I, the way she articulated it, I think it's, I think it's because uh, I I don't know if it necessarily is that you can't eat meat in milk. I know that you said you can't cook a goat. You can't seethe a calf in. Its oh no no! Skin. I'm I'm talking about like practically in a Jewish belief. It doesn't matter if it's a goat in its own milk. You, you don't eat meat and milk together at all. <laughs> Well, we're all so well, I'm going to break that rule. <laughs> yeah, yeah I break it all the dad, time. My dad raised me with uh, with milk at every single meal, and, and yeah. he did meat almost the same way. Of almost course. ate every single meal and milk every single meal. That's why. See, you, know, you, know, so, you know what I think? I, I honestly think God hates me because I honestly have this disease, like this gene thing, this mutation. Goddamn evolution for it. Where Strife, I you not, make me I palm. Like what? you start talking and I just start face palming. Yeah, I know. I I, I get. Do you ever fear palm? <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. What we have just witnessed is the realistic nihilist doing a beard palm. Beard palms. Epic. If you go use down history now. Uh oh! Now we're doing the double beer palm. <laughs> Shit just got real, ladies and gentlemen. This is when theists are going to know there's issues when he just starts beer palming. Yes. You, you know why? You know why we didn't end up talking about conspiracies on this show is because we all conspired to not talk about conspiracies. That's why we wouldn't have to address the real issues. That's because you're New World Order scum. Actually, I think we didn't talk about it's Steve. that did it. It's all about Steve. Actually, we didn't talk about about the sh the topic of the show at all. I'm only here to be a cover up for the topic of women oppression. Yeah. Well, you you did such a good job. We didn't feel we needed to address it anymore. Well, you know, <laughs> that's what the major justice of this episode is. 
Yes, it's it's that it, we found it so unimportant and so unpleasing. You are equals. Yes, yes. we proved our point. <laughs> Hooray for the Lion Go Show! I like we do shit right the first time. The Holocaust and the shit. <laughs> I just want to say it's a meeting all you guys. It was an amazing uh, episode of this podcast. Um, Coffee, I'm now your biggest fan. All right. And yeah, we made fun. friends. Right up there fuck you. you. Yeah, yeah. Fuck you with someone. Now you guys are just going to go jerk each other off. All hey, time. hey, Realistic yeah. Nihilus, I got a oh, challenge for you. on your channel. Hey, look. Hey, hey, this Realistic so cool. Nihilus, Nihilus, I got a challenge for you. Okay. Face palm yourself while doing a double, a double beard palm. What? <laughs> you might have to use his feet in that one. Yes. <laughs> oh! <laughs> do it. Get your well, wife. Wait, wait, get your wife. So, um, I get your wife over. Sleep. She'll, she'll do it for you. <laughs> okay, well, that that's good. So, we got Realistic Dallas, Atheist Coffee, Michael Phelps, not to be confused with the Phelps family. Of course, he's really <laughs> pissed off about that, so, yeah. Uh, we got Sir Stripe that fucks everything up. We got oh, the, up. the annoying, the guy that's always in your face. He's educated, unfortunately. Can't kill him ever. <laughs> Uh, he's the, uh, gadfly and stuff like that. And we also got a lovely female? What is that? Fantastic. Fantastic. Girl, thanks for guy in her life. female. Wait, 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 how about this? It's funny, because we, we were trying not to be oppressive the entire time. <laughs> female how, how, about, how about we end the show by trying to pronounce her name? Okay. Oh. I, I, I'll never do it. <laughs> I don't want to embarrass myself. I, well, well, uh, let's do it this way. I, I say it, then you try to pronounce it, because you'll never get it anyway. Okay. My name is Reuma. Reuma. It's a, it's a beautiful Reuma. name. Reuma. 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 Okay. This isn't going very well. Your name is a troll. <laughs> Her name is Trollus. Bravo, Trollus. I'm the troll. It's like, it's like saying, what's up? Like, what's up? <laughs> what's <yeah. laughs> what's yeah. everyone's general synopsis of the show? I thought it did. I thought it went really well this time. It went well. It was nice to have some really good debate going on, and uh, yeah, it was good. It was fun. Good stuff. So, should I end it now, or are you going to stretch to the last eight or seven minutes? Fuck it, go to the end. I wanted to ask him a question. It's, it's only six minutes. I guess. Ask. Six minutes I want to. Yeah, I just. Uh, it. It would have been better if we. If we would have been. Uh, would have been able to get that. That theist guy, and he actually would have been. You know, not. I mean, I don't know. It, it was kind of okay where he cut out because of the nature of everything he was talking about. Oh yeah, the but, presupp. Uh, presuppositional crap. Yeah. Yeah, but but it still would have been good to have him on for a little while. Eh, that would be a topic wait, for wait, another I, day. Wait, wait, can I if you want, the show and I'll see if I can get him on. That would be good. If you want, I can um, finish this off with a song about philosophers. No songs, wait, please. No. Well, I have a joke. I have a joke for Nile as well. Something, something, Hegel. Yeah, Gadfly, Gadfly, Gadfly. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to, you know, you know, do this. But you start singing, I will boot you so fast, motherfucker! I swear. Fucking a. How yeah. about we all sing it? What's the joke <laughs> for the nihilist? Well, it's just a joke that I just wanted. To, it was popped in my head the other day. But um, what is the, what's the, how is American beer and making love in a canoe the same? Oh God, I don't fucking know, man. They're fu they're both fucking close to water. Eh. Oh. <laughs> I love Monty Python. I that was see. Terrible. That was that yeah, was yeah sex jokes like. That was from the same video, wasn't it? Let's end yeah, this on sex fun. jokes, everybody. <laughs> David Hume can consume Andrew Gabriel Hegel and Lichtenstein was. A Somebody there. boot that guy. Strife is singing. Strife is singing. Take my oh, back. you motherfucker! You motherfucker! Take my back! I should I, I should kick you right now, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, so 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 let's see. All right. Oh, are you going to you or do it? All right, ha how about this? How about this? <laughs> let's all let, let's all end on something. Uh, let's all end on a poem. How wait, wait, that? wait. Let's end on Redline singing um, "Barbie Girl." 
I'm a but, <laughs> no, I'm I'm gonna, what? What was that? That's fantastic. Um, it, a Barbie girl. Barbie. Yeah, you, you want me to sing song. Barbie girl? Who, you who's said with a poem. Me? Let's who, do who a poem. Who wants to hear Red Line sing Barbie girl? Say I. Come up with a poem <laughs> on the spot. Oh, my God. Yeah, I say I. All right, hang on, hang on. Uh, All right, Strife goes first. Strife has to do the first poem, then. Home of what? You oh, have to fine, up. fine, fine. I, 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 okay. Ugh. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world, wrapped <laughs> in plastic. No, dude, stop it's this. It's fantastic. What's the fuck? Yeah, you. Uh, how does the rest of it go? Damn it, Strife. Think, let's go Barbie. Let's go party. Oh, ah, Barbie girl. Come my hair and dress me everywhere. <laughs> Undress me? <laughs> what the God. fuck? What the fuck is going on? I think that's my... And I can agree that this is a moral atrocity. Uh, I, I don't even... <laughs> Strife, why did you make me sing a song I don't even know the fucking words to? We should have said that's called Stuck for your episode. It. Looks like, looks like the after show happened early, folks. Wrapped in plastic, it's, uh, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, You're a Barbie girl. Uh, in a Barbie world. In a Barbie world, okay. Uh, God, That's hang on, let me look up the lyrics real, real quick. Hang on. You got, you got, you got a few seconds. You got, you got a few you got seconds? Only, okay, hang on, hang on. Three minutes. On. Hello, Google. Save me now. All right, hang on. We're going to let this happen. Okay. All right. Wait, wait, wait. How about we all sing it? That would be better. I don't know. Uh, I'm okay. not singing that. No. <laughs> it would I don't was. <laughs> okay, how about how about I will I can't survive? Find it, I damn it. I will survive. <laughs> I will survive. Hey, hey, right, right, hang on. Yes, Hi, Barbie. Hi, Ken. Want to go for a ride? Sure, Ken. <laughs> Jump in. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world wrapped in plastic. It's fantastic. You can brush my hair. Undress me everywhere. Imagination. Life is your creation. Come on, Barbie. Let's go party. Ah, 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 yeah. That was that. Was uh, that good? What is this? Yeah, how to, what is this? Uh, is this yeah, how to lose up. viewers 101? <laughs> <laughs> I think you mentally scarred everyone in the chat room. Okay, I'm but, sorry, but remember, if, if if we need to blame everyone, it was Strife's idea. No, I wasn't the only one. It was Strife's idea. It was Strife's idea. Strife, you, Strife's you now idea. have a price oh, on your head. Can't Ramu we have with video me. evidence of this? Yeah, but Ramu struggle. raised her hand too. She agreed. It, it, it was Strife's idea. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, you blame me because I, I was fight and I'm a woman. I'm a woman, so 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 oh, believe him. I put Michelle, Michael, he had two hands uh, up at all times, so he was actually looking listen. for this before we even started voting. For those watching the video, if you want, just type, put in the comments how much you'll be wanting to put a bounty on Strife's head for that. Yes. <laughs> Kill Strife for my too, horrible my singing awesome. skills. My head's too awesome, isn't it? Just Kill awesome. Strife for my horrible singing skills. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it, I cannot in, sing for it. shit. Uh, I think that's about the end of the show, guys. Okay, think... guys, thank you very much for watching. Again, add, rate, subscribe, do whatever the fuck you want, as long as it's actually adding, rating, and subscribing. So, yes, I'm not giving you a choice in it. All right, peace so out, girls. We're doing the after show, Just like